This is an OCT from a 70 year old gentleman who's 2200. Uh, we know this is a left eye because of the nerve fiber layer always being on the nasal side of the retina. If we start uh, from the most normal part of the OCT, uh, it is helpful to figure out what uh, pathology exists. So starting uh, temporally, we see an RPE uh, that begins to uh, become undulated and eventually uh, ends. In the areas uh, where there is uh, elevation of the RPE, we can see a thin line underneath and that line is Brooks membrane. They are not always visible uh, because of its close connection to the RPE in most images. Uh, however, in this image, there's actually a suggestion of visibility of Brooks, uh, both uh, temporal and actually more prominently uh, nasally. That is subtle. Now we can see where the RPE ends, that there is an association uh, with increased choroidal brightness. Uh, this is because the RPE is normally a highly reflective layer containing melanin. And uh, in the case where the RPE is absent, more light is allowed to penetrate deep into the choroid and consequently more reflectivity. Uh, comes from this layer. So we can see uh, all of the choroidal vessels uh, here, and then we can see the sclera down beneath. Now we actually see that uh, where the RP is intact, we're able to see the uh, choroidal scleral junction, uh, as we can see in many eyes, just using um, standard uh, spectral domain, even without uh, EDI mode. Uh, we see a larger choroidal vessel here. Um, what's different in the area where the RP is absent is it's brighter. And that's uh, fairly apparent. We notice an area centrally where there is uh, not increased brightness. And this is where we see uh, some overlying tissue still. So we know that there's some highly reflective tissue up there, likely some remnants of RPE. Uh, if we continue across, we have more areas of just bare Brooks membrane. Uh, and then we have this structure, which is very interesting from a reflectivity point of view, which is uh, very bright and highly reflective. And we see a very uh, dark area beneath. Uh, if there's increased concentration of highly reflective material and melanin in this RPE, uh, light is not permitted to get down deep. So it's even an extreme example of what we see in the normal RPE and what we see when there's absent RPE, this is where there's an increase in RPE, and that may well just be related to the, uh, the shape of this structure, the RPE rising up uh, above um, the plane of it uh, where it is normally. Uh, we see the RPE kind of continue out, and, and in this area over here, we see some, some thickening, um, and this is all uh, suggestive just based on the appearance here of the outer retina of a patient with dry uh, age-related macular degeneration with geographic atrophy. And that is what we have. These are drusen. Uh, these are drusen that have begun to, loss, uh, to lose their material. And this is an area where there is atrophy. There is central sparing, as is typically the case in geographic atrophy. Uh, let's turn our attention back now uh, more toward uh, the photoreceptor layers, and we see again going to the most normal part of the image. Uh, here, temporally, we see an intact outer nuclear layer, uh, external limiting membrane, and inner segment outer segment junction. We see as we um, proceed into the area of these abnormalities in Drusen, we see uh, that the uh, external limiting membrane. Uh, plummets and is lost. Uh, we note that we can't really see an ISOS junction very well uh, at this point of the drusen. It's hard to distinguish. There's maybe some material in there, but it's hard to visualize. Uh, and that is lost, and there's certainly none of it in here. And in fact, it's not until we get over uh, on the other side of the atrophy that we start to get the ISOS back. 
the external limiting membrane, uh, again, is present over here. If we look at the outer nuclear layer itself, we see that as the dark band. Uh, we see where there's elevation from Drusen that there's, uh, there's actually bright tissue uh, there, and that's the Henle's fiber layer um, that is visible when the uh, geometry of uh, those fibers is altered by the underlying Drusen or by anything underlying that um, pushes on uh, the outer retina so this is to be expected we see that that kind of plummets and falls into this area of atrophy and we see the layers of the inner retina just kind of follow um, track there's uh, no obvious um, thinning in those layers to my eye um, as an aside there's also what appears to be an epi retinal membrane uh, present here nasally as a very distinct um, bright line um, this may just be the posterior hyloid. There's certainly no wrinkling of the inner retina, as we can see. Um, so let's look at the cube in eyes with geographic atrophy uh, and the cross-sectional appearance of uh, increased choroidal reflectivity. Uh, we see a map of this with the OCT fundus image. So in this uh, fairly well circumscribed area uh, on the OCT uh, that appear uh, OCT fundus image that appears brighter, uh, we know that this is areas of geographic atrophy. And um, I published a paper demonstrating how this is the case with geographic atrophy, and uh, was a co-author on a paper with Phil Rosenfeld and Zohar Yehoshua. Uh, showing that this can be used uh, in uh, following progression of geographic atrophy. Uh, both of our papers demonstrated that there's a very similar appearance of this uh, bright area on OCT fundus image uh, compared to the dark area that is visible on uh, fundus autofluorescence imaging.